Today, looking at my favorite mobile filmmaking tech of 2020. Learn how to turn your smartphone into a professional quality video camera. Be sure to check out our mobile filmmaking courses, master the Filmic Pro app, or color grading in LumaFusion, and learn about smartphone video and cinematography. And also don't forget, we have a companion filmmaking podcast. Links are in the description. All right, this year is not really a top list necessarily. It's more just my favorite things from the year. It's been a weird year, and so I haven't actually used a ton of gear, but I do have some favorites that I really enjoyed using this year and that have made my life much easier. And that's kind of my key point. I like gear that you get good results, but also makes your life easier. And so first up, gimbals. And there's a couple that I like, not too many this year, to be honest, but one in particular was from Hohem. It's called the Hohem iSteady X. And that gimbal, surprisingly good. I didn't expect a lot from it, to be honest. I got really smooth footage using the gimbal. It's a lower cost gimbal, but it has very good bang for the buck. So if you're looking for a good basic gimbal, not to mount third-party accessories on because it's not very robust, even though it will hold the larger phones, no problem, check out this Hohem. The other gimbal that I used and reviewed is the Moza Mini P. This gimbal, again, sort of surprised me. Moza make good products, but sometimes they can be hit or miss. I really like their larger gimbals from mirrorless cameras, DSLR, cinema cameras, etc. But some of their smartphone gimbals are actually really good too. And the Moza Mini P really worked well for me when I wanted to trick out my smartphone, put it in a cage, use third-party lenses, because the payload capacity is, I think it's a couple pounds, I can't remember for sure. But check out my previous review on that gimbal if you're interested in a more robust and larger form factor gimbal, but that still is easy to manage for phones and small DSLR and compact cameras. All right, now let's talk about audio. And for me, there were some accessories and a couple mics that stood out this year. First, let's talk about mics. On the budget side, the Comica mics that came out earlier this year, they were delayed due to the pandemic, but the Comica mics, which are more or less a knockoff of the Rode Wireless Go, which I love, those came out last year. These mics are easy to use, affordable. The nice thing is you can use two mics with one receiver. And so as far as budget friendly, bang for the buck goes, you really can't beat these Comica wireless mics. On the other end, even though they are still affordable, were these brand new Lark 150 mics from Hollyland. Very similar to the Comica, but just higher quality. And they're also very small. The smallest mics I believe on the market, remarkably small. And the sound quality on these, for me anyway, is superior to the Comica. I mean, not leaps and bounds better, but definitely better, especially for using them just with the actual built-in mic of the transmitter. Hollyland makes good products and I was very impressed by these mics. And so if you're looking for some wireless mics that are a little bit of an upgrade from the Comica, but still affordable and very lightweight, check out the Lark. The only negative to those I found was that they don't instantly work with a smartphone. They take a little bit of finagling. They do work, but not right out of the box. You gotta find the appropriate adapters to work with your phone. But otherwise, these are solid mics and I would definitely check them out. The last thing is an accessory and it's the Rode Interview Go. This thing looks so simple, but it makes a world of difference and I really like it and I've used this a ton. It turns your Rode Wireless Go into a handheld mic and the windscreen that goes over the top of the mic makes a surprisingly big difference when using it. It turns that mic into a much more usable and I would actually go as far as to say good wireless handheld mic. So if you're looking to accessorize your wireless Go mics, definitely check out the Interview Go. All right, let's talk about lenses. And two that caught my eye this year are the B-Script 1.55 times anamorphic, and then the gold flare anamorphic from Moment, and it's a 1.33. The Moment is familiar. It's the same 1.33 as their blue flare version. It's just got a gold flare. And the gold flare, to me, adds a really interesting look, in particular on the nighttime shots, but even daytime. It's just different because all anamorphics that I've seen, at least in the mobile category, have a blue a blue green flare. And so to come out with a gold one was, I think a really smart move by moment just to differentiate itself. And so if you wanna add just a different look to your footage than the traditional blue, and hey, get a blue one too. You can mix and match depending on the scene. The gold moment anamorphic was something that really intrigued me this year and I've used it quite a bit. The other favorite lens of mine this year is the B-Script 1.55 times. 
Now, interestingly, I got an early version of this lens way back in March, right before the pandemic hit. I actually shot a music video that I haven't released yet on that lens because originally I was going to time it out with their Kickstarter. That didn't happen this summer or even into the fall, but just recently they finally announced it was for sale on their website. So now you can get the B-Script 1.55 times anamorphic. So it produces a 2.76 to 1 widescreen image. And so it's very unique, especially on a mobile device. If you're looking to do movies or music videos or what have you, definitely check out the brand new B-Script 1.55 times anamorphic lens. So one other thing related to lenses, but it's not actually a lens, it's something you use with a lens, the built-in lens, and that is the Moondog Labs multi-camera filter mount. Now this thing came out way back in February, which seems like a million years ago, and I use this all the time. It was the first filter mount to be released that would cover all three lenses on the iPhone, including the ultra-wide. This still works with the iPhone 12, I've used it a lot, although I have learned that it covers the LiDAR sensor. For what I've been doing though, I haven't had any problems. However, Moondog is working on a new version for the 12 series phones. But this is a no brainer. It's super affordable and adding an ND filter is one of the number one things I recommend. So now let's talk about lighting. And lighting of course is very important in video. And there were a couple lights that came out this year that I really liked and I wanna highlight here. And I know lighting is not overly glamorous. The videos on my YouTube channel don't do as well, the lighting videos. But of course, lighting is super important. The first one is the F7 Fold, and it is a unique light. It basically takes two seven inch LED panels and connects them so you can fold it and use it either on your camera or on a light stand, or I like to use it on tabletops or desks and that kind of thing. It kind of has a built-in stand using it this way. It's also RGB, and so it's just a super versatile light that I find I use all the time, in particular as a background light. And then the next one is also unique. It's the Godox R1. It is an LED, what I would call a dome light, and I say dome because of the diffuser it has on it. You don't have to use the diffuser, but I use it with the diffuser most of the time. And I find this light to be super handy. It's magnetic and it's lightweight, and it is also RGB, but it's fairly bright, especially for how small it is. And so it's just a really handy light to have around. Very cost-effective light too. I think it's like 60 bucks. And I have found that this has made my life a lot easier, just dropping a light into a scene, again, for doing background lighting or product shots, etc. And then one other light that I wanna mention is the F7 Mini. This light by far is probably the best bang for the buck light you can get. It is about $60 also. It comes with a diffuser, it comes with a grid, it's RGB, it's very lightweight. You can mount it on a camera, you can use it on a tripod. There's just a lot of ways to mount it. It has good brightness. It's just a very versatile light that you can easily drop in your camera bag and I find I use it quite a bit. So I purposely call this video my favorite mobile filmmaking tech and not gear because there's a lot of tech this year that wasn't gear related per se that has made my life a lot better and is some of my favorite stuff. And the most obvious one for me is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now yeah, that's gear, but really I'm talking more about what's inside it as it relates to the tech. 10-bit video, including the HDR, and now in Filmic Pro, 10-bit Log V3, although it's brand new, I think it's gonna be big, and it's really cool from my perspective to be able to use your mobile device in more cinematic situations, movie making, music videos, and that kind of thing. We've been able to do it for a long time, but now 10-bit video really does take it to the next level. The other thing with 12 Pro Max is the larger sensor. My biggest complaint really of all time using a phone is low light video noise. And now with this larger sensor, that has been diminished greatly. I would actually say it is solid and low light. Now not ultra low light, you've gotta have light. It is a smartphone after all. It's a small sensor compared to like a traditional camera, but it does remarkably well, night and day better than the 11 Pro Max. And that combined with the new F.16 aperture really makes this phone much, much better in low light, which makes my life a lot easier and you'll get better results using your phone in a variety of different lighting conditions. And then one other thing related to tech and the larger sensor is the new sensor shift technology. This is something I don't think has been covered nearly as much on YouTube as I think it should be. This is remarkable tech. It's more or less like having IBIS on your phone 
It's not like the traditional OIS that just doesn't work for video. You won't see a big difference if you're just subtly moving the camera, but you mount the camera at anything like your car or a dolly, you will see a night and day difference. And so sensor shift technology is pretty incredible and one of my favorite things of 2020 tech. And two more final Filmic Pro related advancements. And these are more subtle under the hood things. But with Log V3 now, they have managed to minimize the dynamic tone mapping. The dynamic tone mapping is that horrible stuff you see in your videos where it looks like the exposure is shifting even though you have the settings locked. They can't get rid of it completely because it's native to the iPhone, but they have somehow managed to minimize it and it is so much better that I'm not even really noticing it now shooting Log V3. So that is a huge improvement. The other thing that I'm loving is the clean HDMI out from Filmic Pro. Again, this may seem like a small thing, but it makes a huge difference when you're monitoring video or you can now use Filmic Pro to do live streaming or even Zoom calls. And so again, it's all about making your life easier using your mobile device. And this feature really does that. So it's one of my favorite pieces of mobile filmmaking tech of 2020. Be sure to check out a link in the description for a post I did on my website. It has links to all the gear and even some honorable mentions that I didn't include in this video that you might find interesting. And there's links to the other review videos I mentioned as well. Yeah, I know there was a lot more going on in 2020 than just these. These are my favorites and I'm sure I missed some of your favorites. So let me know in the comments below what I did miss and if you have any suggestions for me or anybody else watching this video. Anyway guys, thanks for a great 2020. Again, it was a very weird year. I'm looking forward to 2021. I appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.